What's going on guys? So what better way to pass the time on a quarantined Friday or Saturday night than with a little happy hour wine tasting? I mean, if we can't go out to happy hour, why not get a few friends on a Zoom video call and share a glass of wine or two and enjoy the company? Guys, in today's video, I'd like to talk about a few simple ways to taste wine and what to look for when buying wine. Interested? Stick around. All right, guys, welcome back. And as always, I'm glad that you're here. Guys, today's video is brought to you by Wine Access. Wine Access is an online wine store with a huge variety of wines to choose from, no matter what your style is. The staff experts collectively taste thousands of wine per year and offer only those wines that exceed expectations defined by their price. So this is essentially taking most of the guesswork out of buying wine because their experts have already approved the wine and you can also see the different scores that some of the wines have received from not only their staff experts, but independent sources like Wine Advocate as well. So as you're spending more and more time at home right now, you can still enjoy really great wines delivered right to your door. Stock up now with some of the best wines in the world by clicking that link down below in the description and get 15% off your order. I wanna thank Wine Access for helping to support this channel during this quarantine, and I'm happy to help support them by letting you guys know about them. So if you're into wine, or if you just wanna pick up some really quality bottles, I highly encourage you to go check them out. Okay, first things first, let me show you how to open a bottle of wine. Now, there's a lot of different bottle openers and corkscrews out there on the market, but my personal favorite is called the waiter's corkscrew or a wine key, specifically one with a double hinge like this. Now there's a small blade on the back side for cutting the foil and of course the corkscrew inside. Now, just for the record guys, I'm not a sommelier, although I have thought about it, but I've opened up a lot of wine bottles in my time, not only for myself, but I also used to work at a really busy winery in the tasting room. So every few minutes, it seemed like we were opening more wine. Anyway, there's a few different ways you can do this and it's all pretty self-explanatory really. But if the foil is loose, you can grab it and just twist it right off. And actually this one is pretty loose. Really, or you can just take your blade and cut the foil. So you can either cut along the top edge like this, or you can do what I do for the most part and cut underneath this rim here all the way around. Okay, once you remove the foil, go ahead and poke the corkscrew right in the center of the cork and turn it all the way in. Now guys, if you're new to this, feel free to use a tabletop or a countertop surface like this, but use the first hinge to pull the cork halfway out and then use the second hinge to pull it all the way out. Now, the reason I don't like using single hinge openers is because they tend to bend the cork and cause it to break in half. The double hinge openers won't break the cork. And as a bonus, mastering a wine key like this also makes you look like a super sexy beast. Now, today we're only talking about red wine. So if you would like me to make another video specifically talking about white wines, please let me know down in the comments. So most red wines will benefit from being in a decanter, but if you don't have one, that's totally fine. Just open the bottle and maybe just let it sit for a little while, or you can swirl the wine in your glass. Now, contrary to popular opinion, swirling the wine is not pretentious. It's just allowing more air into the wine and also allowing the inside of the glass to be coated with wine, which helps the aromatics. So when you swirl the wine around the inside of the glass, the alcohol starts to evaporate and that's a lot of what you're smelling, but you're also left with some of the wine that sticks to the inside of the glass and then starts to drip down, otherwise known as legs. Now, sweet wines tend to behave a lot more like syrup and the tears or legs will drip down very slowly. All right, moving on to smelling the wine, guys. Now, this does not have to be complicated whatsoever, but when you're smelling the wine, just try to figure out or determine at first whether it's a very aromatic wine where it just jumps out of the glass at you or whether it's maybe less aromatic where you find yourself having to search for something. Also, when you're smelling the wine, keep it very simple at first and maybe just try to pick up one or two things that it reminds you of. Now, keep in mind, there are no wrong answers. Try to identify different types of fruit. For example, you could be cherry or plum or blackberry. Also try to determine whether or not those fruits smell ripe or overly ripe or even underripe. Sometimes you might get the scent of sweet strawberry or tart plum or raspberry. Again, guys, there's no wrong answers. And a lot of the times the more popular white wines like Pinot Grigio or Sauvignon Blanc, you'll smell apple, citrus, pear, 
lemon peel, or even fresh cut grass. Okay, it's time to get this wine in your mouth. So when tasting, take a good sized sip in your mouth and swish it around so the wine comes in contact with your entire palate. Different parts of your palate are in charge of different sensations like bitterness and sweetness. So once it's covered your palate for a few seconds, go ahead and swallow it and then breathe in and out a few times. Try to focus more on the structure of the wine and make a determination whether it's a sweet wine or a dry wine. Also try to distinguish the level of tannins in the wine. So tannins are that sort of sandpaper feeling inside your mouth where it almost wants to suck your mouth closed and it makes your lips stick to your teeth a little bit. It's almost like there's sandpaper on your tongue and when you move your tongue across the roof of your mouth, it sort of feels gritty and somewhat astringent. Those are the tannins. So tannins in wine actually come from the grape skins, seeds, and also the stems. Tannins also act like a natural preservative, which helps some red wines age so well. Now try to assess whether it's a really big and bold flavorful wine or if it's more light and smooth and it doesn't go crazy on your palate. Oh, and by the way, that burning sensation in the back of your throat when you swallow, that's the alcohol. You can actually kind of assess the level of alcohol in different wines by gauging that feeling in the back of your throat. So this wine is a 2016 Pinot Noir from Russian River Valley from Fog Crest. It's sort of a medium, bold wine that doesn't go crazy, and the tannins are nice and smooth. Great wine for pretty much anybody. Now, besides all this, and probably the most important thing, do you like the wine? Because if you don't like it, you don't like it, and that's perfectly fine. A lot of people that are new to wine tend to prefer the more sweeter wines and then sort of graduate from there. Now, I do want to leave you with one final tip that's almost guaranteed to help you enjoy your wine some more. Okay. If you're drinking a nice big bold cab like this one from Napa Valley, get yourself some regular flavored beef jerky or some dark chocolate or both, just not both at the same time. Take a sip of wine, swallow it, and while there's still some of that residual wine in your mouth, take a bite of beef jerky or that chocolate, chew it up and just let it marinate on your palate. Guys, this changes the entire flavor dynamic with that wine and you end up with this incredible flavor bomb in your mouth. Guys, I want you to try that and let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Guys, the more you practice tasting, the better you'll get at identifying certain things and then also learning what you like and what you don't like. Guys, I hope you like this one and I wanna thank you very much for watching and also Wine Access for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you hit that link down below in the description to get that 15% off your order. Thanks again for being here and I'll see you in just a few days for a brand new video, but until then, stay healthy, live well, and I'll see you soon.